Hello, how's it going? Today I am very, very excited because I have here an extremely old toy grade buggy. Doesn't sound fantastic when you put it like that, I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. Uh, but hold your horses, this is a Teo Heads Up Hopper, sold in North America as the Tyco Heads Up Hopper. Um, Tyco brand was bought by Mattel in 97, but in America, Tyco. Um, so what is a Tao Heads Up Hopper and what's with the name for a start? Well, the Hopper series of cars were built by Tao slash Tyco um, as a budget alternative to Tamiya's. So they nicked the Hopper name from the Grasshopper because the Grasshopper was such a hit and people referred to it as the Hopper. So they, they, this, they decided to call all their stuff Hopper. So you had the Turbo Hopper, the Jet Hopper, the Mini Hopper and the Heads Up Hopper. So Hopper was basically Tyco slash Tao's buggy. This one was called Heads Up because it actually had quite a cool feature for the time in that the driver's head turned with the steering. I don't know if it's a separate servo or if it's mounted to the same servo with a, with another steering arm or whatever, but yeah, the driver's head turns with the steering, which is quite cool. It's a bit exaggerated, if I remember correctly, um, because, you know, if you're driving, especially if you're driving fast and you're turn, turning to the right, for example, you turn the wheel to the right, but you look sort of through the corner so you, you're still on the windscreen here and you sort of turn a little bit but that's about it you don't go which is kind of what it does but that's fine why have i got this right this is a nostalgia trip basically you may recall that my Tamiya tl01 uh alfa romeo 155 v6 ti bosch which was my first ever hobby grade rc not that exact one but i got that a few years ago because i was trying to recapture um, you know, the nostalgia, because I sold that years and years and years ago. This, so that was my first hobby, a great RC. This is my first RC full stop. This is the first one I ever had. I had it since I was really young, probably primary school young. Uh, to those of you in different countries, probably somewhere between five and seven years old, eight years old, maybe. And I was, I remember, no, I must have been younger than that because I chose it when I stayed in my original home from my childhood and I moved to this one. Was, so it would have been seven at the very oldest. Anyway, uh, so yes, yeah, so I'm recapturing my childhood with this one. I've actually looked for this exact one for many, many years, probably in excess of five years, six years. I actually got in contact with a guy in Australia who specializes in vintage RCs to try and, because couldn't remember what it was called and he helped me you know, ascertain what it was, what I was looking for. Um, but I couldn't find one because this was much more common is black, I believe, maybe red, but the yellow version was super rare. And it was the yellow one I had. And the reason it was the yellow one I had is back in the day when I was very young, um, in fact, I must have been younger than seven then because I'm just thinking back, we were big fans of Nigel Mansell. And in Formula One, he drove with a red five. That was his number. And this has a red five, which is why my dad said you should maybe, well, he gave me an option of which one to pick and I picked the one with the red five. And uh, Mansell stopped racing competitively when I was very young, um, so probably younger than seven. But anyway, yeah, this this is it. This is coming back into my childhood. I managed to get this one at a reasonable price. Um, what I do know of it is, according to the eBay uh, description, cell tape over the stickers because they were lifting there. I'm hoping it doesn't mean the cell tape's been, you know, put fl flat over them completely, uh, more on the edges or whatever, because. If you've done that, there's no, there's no going back from that. You can't lift it again. It'll tear the stickers or lift the surface off the stickers or whatever. So I haven't looked in this box yet at all. I've got no idea what it looks like. Um, I've actually had this for several weeks because it arrived before I left for offshore. But before we open it, we'll have a look at the box here. It says here 27 kilometers an hour. That's about 16.8 miles an hour. Um, so. Um, toy grade speed, but back in the day it wasn't too bad. It's on a nine volt battery. And um, you see here. Oh, that's horrible noise. Um, you've got the slow charger, the nine volt battery. There's the battery pack. What is it? Is it just a bunch of what, nine nine point six so volts? Sorry, not not nine volts. Nine point six volt. Nine volt for the transmitter. Nine point six volts for the car. Uh, NICAD. Okay, I wonder if it's one of these ones which is just a bunch of AAs. But AA batteries, double A batteries stuck together. Um, it says it has a turbo boost mode. Um, I think that's just a green light on the transmitter because you you open it up, and I don't think I I might be wrong. We'll test it. 
I don't think there's a step like a turbo boost in your ESC. You know, when you when you when you got flat out and you, for you know half a second or whatever, then you've got a spike in certain race categories. You got turbo boost boost button. I don't think this is the case. I think it just when you're at full speed, the green light comes on and it's turbo. You know, but I don't know if that's the case. We'll, we'll find out. Um, I also there was an RC in my childhood that had fast and slow mode selectable on the gearbox. Slow mode being better acceleration because it was actually lowering the uh, the gearing and, and increasing the gearing for fast mode. Um, my, my cousins had some RC trucks and I don't know if it was their ones that did it. It could have been this one. I don't know. We'll find out. I don't think there's anything else to see, to say rather on the on the box here. As you see here, the, the driver's head turns. These look like uh, just friction shocks all around, which would be spot on. This, like I say, was a budget alternative and an easy alternative to the Tamiya's at the time. It was like, here's a smaller, cheaper Tamiya that you don't need to build yourself, and it had comparable speed. I mean, this was basically the same sort of speed as a, as a full hobby grade grasshopper or a Tamiya Hornet or something. Anyway, let's get this thing cracked open. What do we have? Okay, comes with uh, the original manual with a spare body clip, look at that. Um, cool. Caution, do not, it gets hot, don't drive it while drunk, don't drive it while high, don't crash into cats deliberately. Um, safety guidelines on batteries, don'ts, more don'ts. Unicross 9.6. Volt battery. Is this, was that a standard one or did that come? I don't know. I don't know. Let's get rid of all that. We're not interested in that just now. Let's have a look at the car. At the buggy. Oh, oh there's some at the door as well. Two good things. Alpha mail parts arrived at the door. Anyway, look at this. It's incredibly well presented and very original. Um, Look great, it looks really good. That's a horrible noise. Okay, how do I put this down without? All right, let's have a look at this. Put that aside for the moment. Ho ho ho. Yeah, that's the one. It's, ah, see, look, high speed, low speed, or F and S, fast and slow, literally. It's just gearing. Aye, the stickers did say on the... Uh, unfortunately. They've made a reasonable effort. They have put sellotape over the stickers, but they've, they've cut it to try and match the shape and they've avoided the aerial in the, in the cage here. Um, the stickers are lifting a bit. Unfortunately, um, that just means, like, you can see quite a bad one there. That just means that dirt is going to stick under the sellotape and it'll get filthy looking. So. I want to put it over the grill. Oh, just put myself in the eye. <laughs> um, put myself in the eye with a 50 odd year, year old aerial, probably carrying all sorts of things. Um, the, the grills as well. Here, um, yeah, they're covered up. So I'll maybe get a little craft knife and neaten those up. Uh, I'm sad to see that the two front spot lamps are missing. I really hope they're in the box because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the photos were still. They're still on there in the photos. Um, oh, I really hope they're in here somewhere. Oh, they are. Ooh, thank goodness. Yes, because you've got to keep it complete, you see. Ah, see, they, they need glued in or whatever. There you go. Look at that. Heads up, number five. Very much like a grasshopper style suspension. Um, doesn't have the, the rotation like, like, it, like it does on a lunchbox or a Hornet. But the floating gearbox, just just like that, yeah. Um, sprung suspension, friction shocks. There's no oil damping whatsoever. It, it looks good though. Really, not much sus suspension movement. Eh, a little bit, I suppose. No differential, unless it's that's nah, the differential. I was going to say, unless that's stronger than the motor itself, but it's not. I can, I can hold it. There's no diffs. Rear wheel drive, obviously. Yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> I like it. Heads up hopper. 
transmitter. You can see there it's got the terrible power sticker. I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Just classic toy grade 1980s, 1990s stuff. Pretty sure this was an 80s car. Um, very plasticky, very brittle feeling. Um, reasonably good condition because, I mean, part of it is that the bumper, you see it's had a lot of scar time. The bumper is very robust considering the weight and speed of this thing. Although it will have become brittle with time. Um, so probably best not to, yeah, probably best not to push it too much. Um, I remember that problem. You used to dig the R clip, the body clip, into the sticker, rip the sticker, everything you did that. Uh, I managed to sort of bend the clip upwards to avoid it, but he's just cut the sticker away. Right, does this come off still? Is there another? Oh, see, it hooks, hooks into the cage. In, in. I think it looks good. Whoa. Proper proportional servo. I don't think it's a hobby grade servo. I don't think it's replaceable. Um, ah, you can see here, there's the arm controlling the driver. So I don't really want to force it, but anyway, you can see the head turning a little bit. Yeah, I don't want to push it. But yeah, um, I don't know what I would do if that servo failed. Probably nothing. <laughs> it's alright though, it's not bad. Caution hot, do not touch motor plate, so it's got a little bit of cooling on the motor. This one has been run in fast mode, he's got it set to fast. Tires are in good nick, they've started to whiten a little bit, but no big deal. Tyco RC, no, oh sorry, KO RC, now there, there was, made in Singapore. Now there was a, yes, similar advert right here, see the um, battery is goosed, you see that there, it's broken. You can tuck it in apparently and, and sort of get some new sort of it, but I, he's tried to re repair it with some tape. I just, 9.6 volts, 650 milliamps. I don't think it's worth saving. Pretty sure you can still get these batteries online. So I'll maybe just grab one. Tammy, a plug. I'll grab, grab one of these batteries. I was, I was considering going, oh, let's, uh, let's see what it's like on a two cell light bulb. But let, let's start off the way it's supposed to be driven with a 9.6 volt nickel metal high drive. Yes, a two cell light bulb is less voltage than that, but it has such a higher discharge rate that it'll be faster with a, a light bulb than, than one of these. So that's what we'll try. Is that Tam? Oh, the charger's got two different plugs on it. Mini Tamiya and normal Tamiya. What is the speed is? 250 milliamps. That's not bad. 2.5 amps. That's not bad. Output. 5.6 volt DC, 250 milliamps, 11.2 volt DC, 150 milliamps. I don't know why it's too rated, but I'm not that good up on that sort of thing. But yeah, 250 milliamps would, would charge this pretty quickly at 650. Yeah, you know, a couple of hours, two, two and a half hours. Um, not bad, but uh, I've got a charger that'll do that better. Pretty sure it can still charge 9.6 volt neck ads. I'll look it up. The only other thing in here is the, uh, the aerial. Does it still screw in? Is the thread there? Sometimes these collapse internally. Yep, it's good. Perfect. So, I've been looking for years for one of these, and this is about as good as I could, <coughs> excuse me, possibly hope. I mean, it's, it's pretty original. It's in pretty good neck. It's not incredible, but I could probably tidy it up a little bit, trim some of this tape with the dirt behind it around all the stickers. You know, here for example, um, give it a little bit of a clean, yeah, tidy it up. Um, new battery, maybe a new charger, we'll see. Um, and then test it. But, now that I've got it, and it looks it looks really good, it does look really good. It's, it's identical to my one from my, kid, my childhood, so I'm really pleased to have it here. Now that I have it, I've got no idea what on earth I'm supposed to do with a 30 year old toy grade buggy. <laughs> now that I have it, what on earth am I supposed to do with it? I mean, it's not like you can, you can see here, it's got probably a 370 sized motor in there. You can see, you can take the cap off. I bet we can get into the motor. 
Um, but with a two cell light bulb, that would be pushing towards 20 miles an hour if it's, you know, just under 17 with this. Um, certainly, maybe not top speed wise, but acceleration wise, it would certainly be a lot better on the, on the, on the light bulb. So, it's not bad in terms of performance. It'd be interesting to see how it compares to sort of. I don't think I have anything of this ilk. I mean, that's brushless, so that doesn't really count. But um, I just don't know what I would do with it. I, would I would I modify it? Would I would I just tidy it up and keep it 100% original, which is kind of more what I'd be leaning to. But if I get the original, how much fun could I have with it? You know, I'm, I don't know. Now that it's arrived, I just don't know what what I would do with it. If you have any suggestions or any feedback for me, let me know. I hope you enjoy this little trip to memory lane. Do you guys have any experience with one of these things? Did you own a Tyco or a Teo? Did you specifically own a heads up hopper, maybe a jet hopper, mini hoppy, hopper, turbo hopper, another sort of hopper? Um, what would you do with it? I think it was a case of, ah, there's finally one on eBay, bye. Now what? <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.